Good morning, class. This is my art studio. It's called the Godstone Ranch in Houston. Welcome. And we, today we're going to do fundamentals of design. We are going to start with module four. So get that up on your bright space. And let me just go through this very quickly. I'm going, it'll give you all the instructions. This page is going to be wonderful. You need to read all of it and look it over. I told you I was going to add one of these every single week. This is to look at. It's the big map on all the fundamentals of design. All really interesting. Okay, so here we are with pattern. I'm going to describe that to you in just a minute. And then we have the assignments. You know that there's four. So there's one, two, three, and four. Okay. So as usual, we need to get out our color pencils, our black pen, and I will have the um, copies made for you. They're right outside my room in Houston um, by the sink. So just look in the cupboards if you are not able to come to class. So let's start. I'm going to read this for you. In class, we would be reading this together as a group. Pattern is an underlying structure that organizes surfaces or structures in a consistent, regular manner. P pattern can be described as a repeating unit of shape or form, but it can also be thought of as the skeleton that organizes the parts of the composition. Pattern exists in nature as well as in designed objects. It is useful to look at the parallels. A Harvard biologist named Peter S. Stevens has published a book entitled Patterns in Nature in which he claims that there are only a finite number of ways that patterns can be structured. So you might want to look that up. It's pretty interesting. And I have a link to it. Um, he, he presents a set of ways in which the points of a grid can be connected. These modes of connection become classes of pattern, which he claims can be seen in any situation in nature and in man-made Im images and from microscopic to cosmic scale. Pretty cool, huh? The modes he describes include the following, which are described here in terms of examples from nature. However, each of these modes can also be seen in examples of designed objects and works of art. So the first one pattern that we're going to try to look at and understand is called flow. And I have an image here for you. All things flow, following paths of least resistance. Flow can be seen in water, stone, the growth of trees, meander patterning, is related to the idea of flow and is built on the repetition of an under, undulating line. In this detail from a textile hanging uh, made up in the knotted threads, the meandering color lines resulting from the technique quite naturally create this type of pattern. So I, want you, I really want you to try to study that. Just zoom in if you have your phone to understand the flow in that image and also the meander pattern. Next one we're going to talk about is branching. It's, it, okay, branching is an obvious form of patterning in the planet world, but it can also be, oh, sorry, the plant world, but it can also be seen in ge geological formations such as rivers, deltas, and certain crystalline formations. So I have a picture here of uh, the branching pattern, and it kind of, sh uh, an example to show you how to do it, because we're going to do an a, a exercise on that. Okay, stay with me. Last two right here are spiral patterns, which can be seen from the scale of galaxies to the opening fiddlehead buds in ferns to the forms of microscopic animals. And then the lastly is packing and cracking. Uh, refers to the way in which compacted cells define each other's shape. A densely packed cluster of mushrooms will grow together, deforming the circular form of each cap because of the crowding. In the same way, a cluster of soap bubbles deforms each bubble from the perfect sphere of the isolated bubble. According to the rules that govern the surface tension of soap bubbles, surfaces like mud or old paint that shrink may experience cracking. We've all seen that resulting in similar cellular patterning. So that's pretty interesting. I said it fast, but you might want to just sit there and ponder it for a second and think about what we're talking about. And we're going to do the um, exercises. So first one we're going to do is, that we talked about is pattern assignment one. All right, I'm going to change the um, camera. And so get ready, get your supplies. You need a ruler, paper, the paper, um, pencils, and a marker. So here we are with the first um, assignment. It's going to be flow which is pattern. In the space below, create your own flow pattern image using rectangles. Finish the colored pencil with, in colored pencil and black ink. The whole rectangle must be filled with flow meander pattern. 
So if we go back to the first one right here, flow meander, that was um, the lady used the um, knotted uh, threads. So they, they wove together and then they meandered along this way and this way. This is rectangles, so we're going to do that. Was this is more organic, and this is not going to be organic. Okay, so what we're going to do is geometric. Um, they do curve this way, and they get smaller as they go back. Remember, everything gets smaller as it goes back in space, and it gets bigger as it comes closer to you. Do not copy this. I want you to make up your own, but it has to be um, rectangles. So and color pencil and pen just like this but I don't want you to copy this some of the assignments we have copied because I really want you to understand what the uh, one was trying to teach you but in this case I, I think you can handle doing a flow meander pattern um, going either this way or coming towards you um, going far back and remember if it goes away it gets smaller if it comes to you it gets bigger and it needs to be pleasing remember we talked in class that if the whole, the whole point is, if you're doing something with a design and it's not pleasing, then that's, you need to work on it. Okay, so make sure it's finished, make sure it's beautiful, make sure it covers the entire rectangle. And it's finished in marker, the black marker and the colored pencil. Okay? Okay, that's, that's assignment one. So I'm going to do a little demo here. Pretend that this is... Right there, okay? So we're going to try to do a pattern that is what? Rectangles, okay, with a flow. So I don't want you to copy this one. I want you to come up with it yourself. So you've got, yes, it has the circles and it has curving lines. So if you think about um, flow and meander, you don't necessarily, let me see, where's my, oh, I don't know ruler right quick but you don't necessarily think of straight lines those are not flowing right so let's not do straight lines okay that means that we're gonna have to do flowing lines all right well if it's farther away it would be up here or over here or over here and if it's closer it has to be bigger as it gets down there so why don't we come up with a flowing plan and a pattern would be, if you notice here, this is a pattern. That's already a pattern. And then on the short side of it, this is parallel to that, this is parallel to that and that, this is parallel, this is parallel. See what I'm saying? So, and these curve and they're parallel. So you're creating a pattern that's really nice. And then you're adding color on top of that. That is very, very nice. So why don't, I hope my pen works. Um, why don't we start off, you're going to come up with your own, but mm, I'm going to say, I'm going to flow. So I'm going to do a meandering, flowing, it has to get fatter as it comes closer to you. And you can use a, an old piece of paper, just a trash piece of paper, to come up with something, like a few of them, that you can look at yourself. I'm going to make this one go this direction. Okay. And then at that point, I can do, I might want to make my lines fatter, some of them. And I'm not going to be scribbly when I'm doing my real thing, okay? I'm going to get out my really nice markers, and I'm going to make it super clean, super black and nice and smooth and loved and all of that business and I'm going to get so let's just work down here so now I'm going to say okay I want rectangles in there maybe I don't want rectangles like they have maybe I want rectangles that go kind of a, in a curving diamond shape you know maybe I could be a little more creative there But now, as they go back, what happens? They get smaller. So let's all remember that. They get smaller. I kind of like my little diamond one there. Um, let's see what I can do here. Maybe I like. It has to be repetitive. Okay, 
this. So if I'm going to do that here, I have to make sure that I repeat that at least there's a diamond every now and then. So I ha I'd want to have a diamond rectangle here. And I'm curving those edges a little bit so they're not perfectly straight. So that they, they feel like they're flowing and meandering here. Okay. So at this point, I might want to have a meandering, flowing diamond there. Patterns have a little bit of a, a structure to them that's repetitive. So there we go. Then that would be off there. So now we're going to have another one here. It gets bigger because it's closer to you. See what I'm saying? So I can't just suddenly over here start doing circles. For sure, because that's not the assignment. But let's just say I just start going like doing this and just going off the reservation of, okay, I'm just going to do a totally different thing here than I have everywhere else. No, that's probably not a good idea because that's totally different. Well, what if we do this? You say, but I really want to do that. Okay, that's fine. And then what we'll do is go off the reservation, start doing the flow, doing a totally different thing. You have to feel your freedom. If you're an artist, it's okay. It has to get smaller as it goes back. And then guess what? It has to be a pattern. So if it's going to be one of those, one of those, then what are we going to do over here? We're going to go back to one of those. So I'm trying to help you understand that whatever you do, it is a pattern. It's mathematical. It is repetitive. Um, I'm trying to look at this one how I did it. And then now we're going to go back to my diamond pattern there like this. And so then over here, what am I going to do? I'm going to do this repetitive of this one. So yes, you don't have to do the same exact thing like they did here, meaning like every single thing is exactly pretty much the same. You can do two different patterns. You can do three different patterns, but it has to be repetitive. Okay. So, and then when you're all finished, I want those black lines just as clean as that. And I want the color to be very, very, very um, uh, waxy. So I want to see it very nice, dark, not faded out drawing pencil color, okay? Okay, so now we are doing assignment two. So go back to your um, your description page. We're gonna be doing the branching. I really love doing all of these patterns, and I think you will too. I've tried to um, get them all different for you. So here's what we're gonna do. It's, the instructions say, in the rectangle below, create an interesting and unique branching pattern arrangement using the images on this page. Finish with black ink. So just black ink with white paper, no colored pencils this time. You'll need to look at all of these little shapes, okay? And somehow you're gonna arrange them here in, and you're gonna be using this. So you're gonna, you're gonna try to take this image and flip it or turn it or make it small and big and add these things to it because everything has to branch off of this vine. Okay, and you can make more than one vine, but it needs to be beautiful and full. So what I don't want you to do is get to the edge and go uh, stop right there or stop right here. I want you to keep going. So you might want to cut a square out or, or do something over it and then put it underneath and trace it back, okay? Because I want you to really use the whole space and go off the space, okay? Branching basically like this. See how it goes off the space? Okay, so that is assignment two. Okay, on to number two here. Okay, this one is the branching. I love branching. I just think it's super fun. You can use, um, let's see what I have here. I have in my studio some circles so I could trace a little bit around. My pen's not working out great, but maybe another one over here. And then, sewing in here. It's a bobbin. And I'm just going to quickly show you how you do this. So, here we go. Around. Oh, come on. 
around and around and around she goes and then I come over here and I go oh there it goes and then it has beautiful shape um, I wouldn't like this part because it's flattened and this part's too pointy right there and there so you're gonna have to really try your best to make it beautiful beautiful but I'm trying to do this quickly so you don't feel like you're watching the longest video on the planet Earth. So, this is basically how you do a spiral. And then this one's going to come back out here. See, I wasn't even trying too hard, and it's just so lovely. Um, okay, so then these little pieces stick off. So there's one sticking off, and then there's another one that can stick off. Um, you got some leaves that have beautiful leaves. Okay. But the assignment is also going to be that you go off of the page here. So let's do this. There we go. There's one spiral that's gone off the page. And its little vine went off the page. See, it's not hard to make it go off. And I don't want to see this. Okay, it's off the page. Boom. And boom. That's not what I'm talking about. That did not help your design at all. So don't do that. It has to be beautiful all the way everywhere. Okay, now what we're going to do is take some of these designs, well, all the designs it says, and so let's start with this one, simple. Let's, why don't we just do it right there? I'm going to erase that and I'm going to turn it into that pattern, repetitive, and I'm going to clean it up. It's going to look super beautiful. Here's another one. There's another kind. So I'm going to go right here. Uh, that one has a little spiral at the end which is nice for our spiral design and it has the coolest little stuff in here I'm going fast you're gonna go slow and my pen is just not cooperating I took all my pens to class so I need to put one in my backpack to come back to my studio okay so there's that and you're just going to keep going and keep going and when you're finished you're going to go ahead and get your black markers and make it super clean i don't want to see stuff like i just did and lines that are uh, 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 oh i don't know i'm not sure okay so i want to make sure that we know what we're doing and if it's going to be a fat line because look some of them's fat some of them are fat and some are skinny please make the edges super clean not like this looks all right, and I just want to see it just be super beautiful, okay? All right, this is assignment three. It says, in the rectangles below, create your own spiral pattern triptych. Triptych means three, okay? Three that go together. By using the example shown above, finish in black ink must be clean and precise. So again, no color on this one, but we do want to have a very precise black lines. So remember um, to make every line super clean, not scratchy, um, and they need to be at one solid clean line. So look at this pattern very carefully. They're super duper 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 clean, all right? And if you need to use a template, you know, I have templates in class, but you can find a pen cap or something if you want to do circles so that they're very, very precise. Um, you can use a protractor, you can use um, rulers, whatever you need to do, but see that there's some lines here, but it is a spiral design, okay? So yes, there's some lines, but it's spiral. Okay, so what I do not want to see again is just one little spiral in the middle of each one. It needs to be just like this where it's full, completely full and completely interesting, well done. It's not super easy. It is time consuming and you have to be detailed about it. You also kind of have to be mathematical about it because remember patterns are a little bit of a repetition um, that we expect. So they didn't throw a triangle right in here, see? Um, they didn't throw a square in this one. You, you have to be repetitive when you do patterns. All right, so this is a spiral, repetitive spiral design, and it needs to be clean and beautiful for project number three. Okay, so we are going to do a triptych. Triptych is three that go together. Here's our triptych assignment. We are going to use these, and we're going to make a triptych. So this is my pretend ruler, All right, my stir stick. I don't want to get up and walk over there and waste your precious time watching this video. But anyway, it's my, my ruler. Okay, there we have it. 
Now, on this part, just try to do this, okay? You don't have to invent the wheel. Just try to do the spiral that you see there. And I'm right here, but I'm adding even more. It doesn't have to be precise. I made the, rect the rectangles in the assignment longer than my examples because I wanted you to be able to have to come up with a little bit of the space by yourself. So, let's see. Uh, so, lines have to touch. They need to be not scratchy like I just did. My pen. Anyway, um, and I want you to do your best to try to make this pattern here. Here we have straight lines, but they go in a spiral. So you don't have to always have curvy lines, and that's why I liked that example, but you do want to start off with, like when you did the shell for, for the textures, it's a little bit like that. You have to just make a nice um, spiral. You can use um, anything you have to make your spiral nice. I would use something circular. Let's see what I have. They get smaller and bigger, but I'm just going to use that right now so that it looks nice and repetitive. Um, this might be kind of cool to use to go around. I don't know, maybe you can even get your marker and just dot something, you know? That'd be fun. So get that done, and then now this one is going to be really super, 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 super precise. So you're going to have to do your best. It's almost like a puzzle, um, because look at this one. So these circles get small, and then they get bigger, 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 bigger. So small, bigger, 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 because remember, everything coming closer to you gets bigger in space. And these lines, you need to use a ruler. Don't use your hand, okay? Yes hand here, no, no hand here. This one right here. Every little bit, this is super flat for a pattern. It's right all in the same dimension. So nothing's going back in space like this is. Nothing's going back in space like that space is, you know, in, behind this. Everything is in your face. So every little space has to be the same um, width. So the white is the same as the black everywhere in the whole entire thing with the two circles. Okay? So, and we know that that will repeat here and here and here and here. That this is a pattern that will repeat. This is a pattern that we know repeats. It's the same thing over here. So this is a really fun one. You're going to have to take a little time and be super, super clean. All right. This is the last one. So this is assignment number four. It's going to be so much fun. Use the portrait image of Frida below. This is Frida. You call her an artist. Fill it in like this example using the pack, uh, the packing and cracking pattern method. Finish in black ink. So you're going to come up with all kinds of patterns, and you're going to fill in this one. No color. Again, it's just black with white, but it has to look that good. Okay? And she has background all over, so it goes all the way to the edges. So make yourself a rectangle around her head, and then... It kind of has a spiral, um, which is a, a continuous line. So do a continuous line to make your spaces. And then you can use these patterns up here. Use all of the patterns shown on this and the previous page. Finish in black pins of all sizes. So you can use those patterns and you can use these patterns. You're supposed to, okay? All right, that's it. Okay, here's the last one. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I already have the drawing done for you, but you're going to need to uh, draw a nice rectangle. Use your, uh, that's nobody. Okay, so you're going to have to use your ruler to go around this because you're going to have to fill in the background just like all of that. And you're going to use all of these different kinds of designs. I want you to look at the patterns that they have, and I want you to use all of these patterns and all of these patterns. I'm going to finish it out in super thin straight lines, little, little circles, fat marker circles, 
curves, um, scratchy little dots, uh, open dots. <sighs> what do we have here? Oh, this is fun. This is just kind of a spiral design that's filled in in spaces. That's super fun. Um, and just vertical lines, these lines, rectangles, um, curves that are filled in with line, triangles, almost a, um, like we did on, up on this one right here. Nice repetitive pattern that's up in your face that's all exactly the same. This would be uh, packing and cracking. Um, you see what I'm saying? Okay, so you're going to use all of that, and I'm going to check. You know I will. So have fun. God bless you guys. I hope you have a wonderful week.